if I have a system of vectors, and you see, I'm gonna on this slide, I will be spe I will I will specifically focus on uh, n tuples of scalars. So it's not like a you with some effort with some effort you can take this concept of orthonormal vectors to arbitrary vector spaces, almost arbitrary vector spaces, but we're going to discuss this concept only within the within the scope of uh, Fn vector space. So if you have m vectors, m for Mary, in n-dimensional n-tuple space, Fn, f goes for the field of scalars, uh, rationals, reals, or complex. In, a, in It will work with any choice of scalars. You will call this system orthonormal, orthonormal system, if and only if, uh, two conditions are met. First one is this. If you take the dot product of any pair of vectors from this system, it will be zero as long as the pair is distinct. So the vectors do not coincide. And the second condition which must be met is that if you take the dot product of the vector with itself, xj with xj, that will be one. We all know that if you take a dot product of a vector with itself, that delivers the length of that vector. So the second condition equivalently can be interpreted as the length of the vector or the modulus of the vector is one. Uh, sometimes, sometimes, uh, you may see the systems where only the first condition is met and the second one is a little bit relaxed by not requiring equality to one by just require, uh, requiring not being zero. So sometimes the condition B can be relaxed to the condition B dash, I'll call it B dash, where you require that the dot product of the vector with itself is simply non-zero. This is a this is obviously more general condition than condition B. In such a case, this system is no longer called the orthonormal system, it's called the orthogonal system. In such a case, the system will be called the orthogonal. Most of the time, I mean, most of the arguments which are applicable to the orthonormal systems, they will be easily transferable to Orth uh, orthogonal systems, uh, so they are almost identical to each other. Now, these are the two results which are normally, which normally must be remembered when you discuss or have, if, when you deal with the orthonormal systems or orthogonal systems. Uh, we'll just look at, oh, sorry. <coughs> sorry. Imagine you have a vector which comes from the span of the system B, from the orthonormal system, which means so having something from a span means that this something is representable as a linear combination. Here's my linear combination. If you have something like this, and if you wonder, if you wonder how to find these coefficients, in general, we all know what we have to do. We have to write the associated augmented matrix and solve the associated system of linear equations. In case you deal with the orthonormal system, you don't have to go that lengthy path. Instead, you have a direct formula how to find these coefficients. Here they are. These unknowns, lambdas, they simply can be delivered by taking the dot product of your vector A, which came from a span, with each individual element of your system x, j. And that is true for every j from 1 to m. As simple as this. That's where, that's where the simplicity of dealing with the orthonormal, orthonormal systems comes into, comes handy. Like I said, this simplicity, it is, uh, it is actually balanced out by the difficulty of finding orthonormal systems. They're not easy to find. Unlike any other linearly independent systems, they're not easy to find. But if you have them, finding these coefficients it's just a, sim a simple computation of dot products. Here's the proof. The proof is it's a computational proof which relies on properties of dot products, which I assume you know. We simply take this right-hand side and we simply compute it. So I'll do it for j equal 1. Here's my dot product, a, 
with x1. All I do, all I do in my proof, I just replace this a with the, this linear expression for a. Easy replacement. So long bracket, lambda 1 x1, lambda 2 x2, plus dots plus lambda m xm, and here's my dot product. It's a simple replacement. Now if I expand these brackets, if I expand these brackets, because we know that the dot product is subject to the regular distributive flow, so we can do the regular expansion. And here's my expansion. X1 comes next to X1. X1 comes next to X2 and many others. The last one will be X, uh, X1 next to Xm. And now I make the observation that each of these individual dot products, the first one is simply 1 because of the property B in the definition of the orthonormal system. And all of the other brackets here, they're simply zeros because of the property A. And so the whole thing becomes just simply lambda 1. Here it is. And that finishes the proof of this identity for J equal 1. I think it's not really a big... It's, it's not really a brainer to just tell me to just to figure out what to do when J equal 2. It just... All you have to do, you have to take again the dot product with the x2 this time. Again, you sub in your expression for a vector, and you do the expansion. Here's my expansion. Uh, lambda 1, x1 dot product x2, lambda 2, x2 dot product x2, plus dots, plus the last one will be lambda m, xm dot product with x2. And again, in this expansion, every, every bracket except for the second one will vanish due to the assumption A here. And the second bracket, in fact, will be just unity due to the assumption 1, uh, due, sorry, due to the assumption B. And so the whole thing just come, becomes lambda 2. You can repeat this process M times, and then for each individual dot product, you will have the same conclusion, it will be lambda. And that's how you finish it. That's how you finish proving such, such a lemma. Uh, it may be a good exercise, independent exercise, for you to figure out what will happen if you no longer deal with the orthonormal system, but you deal with the orthogonal system instead. So where the assumption B is replaced with the assumption B dash. The argument will stay almost identically the same. There will be minor alterations, and it will be a good task for you to figure out where exactly these alterations are. Apart from that, that's the finish of the, of the proof. Any questions? There is one corollary for the, to, this, to this lemma, which is, in fact, uh, which is, in fact, tutorial question 52. But here I will call it corollary. So it's a consequence of such a lemma. Uh, the, the consequence sounds like this. If B is orthonormal system, or is simply orthonormal, then such a system will necess uh, necessarily be linearly independent. I didn't, I didn't prove it yet. I, I already like sort of hinted it that orthonormal system and in fact, orthogonal system as well. They're always linearly independent. I hinted it a few times. Actually, that follows exactly from the lemma we just proved. And here's the argument. Look at this. Here's a proof for the corollary. And it's also a solution for the question 52 in the tutorial book. If I, if I want to prove that something is linearly independent, every time the argument goes the same, follows the same pattern, you make the assumption that the linear combination of this system returns you zero. So here's my linear combination. Lambda 1 x1 plus lambda 2 x2 plus dots plus lambda m xm. I make such an assumption. And from this assumption alone, not, I'm not allowed to using anything, I'm not allowed to use anything else. From this assumption alone, I have to conclude that each individual coefficient here is zero. But in case you're looking at the orthonormal system, each individual coefficient can be computed directly by the formula like that. 
where a this time is simply zero vector. So having this assumption alone and having the fact that b is ortho uh, uh, orthonormal system, I can say that the lambda 1 coefficient alone by this formula is simply the dot product of my zero with x1. But we all know dot product of a zero vector with, with anything returns zero number. Here it is. And lambda 2 vector will, lambda 2 coefficient will be dot product of the zero vector with x2. And that's another zero. And you can say the same thing, basically the same thing about every coefficient lambda, because every coefficient lambda is simply dot product of a zero vector with the element of your orthonormal system. So every other coefficient, including the last one, lambda m, will simply be zero. Of course, the whole weight of the, this, the proof of the corollary is, corollary is only two line. The whole weight is, sits here in this lemma, which is a more general statement, which gives you the formula for finding the coefficients.